In this video, by way of a little demonstration, we'd like to prove this physical point that we discussed in the last video, that capacitors are able to store charge, or we'll maybe make it a little more correct to say they're able to store electrical energy. Um, they're like a battery in that regard. Batteries store their potential electrical energy in chemical reactions that are driven when a circuit is connected across the two contacts. Now, capacitors don't have any chemical energy in them, but they have those two conductors inside that are separated by some gap. Charge can be placed on them that's just ready and willing to go, and that's the electrical energy that can be supplied if a circuit is connected across the leads of the capacitor. So just to point out, these electrolytic capacitors, which we'll be using quite a bit, they are polarized. That means they have to be put in the circuit in a particular way. The way you can tell is by looking very carefully at the markings on the case here. This one has all these, this big white stripe with all these dashes in it. The dashes mean minus for negative. So this is the more negative lead, and the other one would, of course, be positive. So capacitors are a little bit like LEDs in that regard. LEDs also have this polarity about them. And in particular with LEDs, as we learned, the flat edge of the LED is always connected to the more negative side of the battery. So too are these capacitors here. So anyway, onwards with our demonstration here, just keep that in mind. Let's just go ahead and put the capacitor right into the circuit. And I'm careful, careful here to put this negative side onto the negative terminal of the battery, which is down here along this sort of second to last row here on the breadboard, something like this. So there it's in there. And so what I have here, the capacitor is in the breadboard, and I have this negative lead connected to the negative side of the battery, and I have this other lead here, this positive lead here going to the positive terminal of the battery. And so what will happen now is when I connect the battery to the capacitor is supposedly charge will flow off the battery and onto the capacitor. So we don't really see anything happening or anything, but charge is supposedly flowing. Uh, so we'll just let that sit for a second, although it just takes a very brief amount of time for a capacitor to fully charge at least of this size. And so what we're going to do then is just to, to demonstrate or prove this idea that capacitors actually store energy is we're going to disconnect the battery in just a moment. Actually, well, why don't we just disconnect it now? Okay, we're going to disconnect the battery. Here's the battery. It's off. You can see there's nothing connected anymore. And so the capacitor is was connected to the battery, so supposedly it's full of charge. In other words, supposedly the conductor is inside of a capacitor. If here's the two gaps between the two plates like this, so that's sort of the internal representation of a capacitor. Supposedly now, look like this, fully charged up. Can I use the charge? Well, of course I can. Charge is charge, just like it came from a battery. So suppose I connected this wire that's feeding this protection resistor into the LED to the positive terminal of the capacitor. I've got both negative sides already con connected together like this here. So the negative of the LED is already connected to the negative of the capacitor. That's very much like the negative connection on a battery. Let's just go ahead and connect this wire to the positive plate of the capacitor and see what happens to the LED. Did you see that? Did you see how the LED came on and then faded out? Let's do that again. So battery's connected. Alligator one, alligator two, a couple seconds. I go disconnect again over here. See the LED come on fading like that? Why would it do that? Well, initially we have this capacitor which is fully charged. So the LED is really bright, can take advantage of all this charge rushing through it. The protection resistor is in there so the LED doesn't burn out, doesn't draw too much charge at once. But then what happens of course is this is a, a, a way that battery that capacitors are different than batteries. The capacitor will eventually run out of charge. The battery will also run out of charge when it goes dead, but they can last much longer here. And so we see that the LED just can't sustain its brightness very long. So if we charge it up, it's bright nice and bright, but it doesn't last very long because the capacitor just runs out of charge. You see the battery is disconnected, and I had it disconnected before for a long amount of time, and it's disconnected now, but the capacitor will hold on to that charge. And there's that discharge process again. Very nice. So there's even something else we can do as long as we're running here, but I hope you were convinced there that charge was stored, or electrical energy was stored inside of the capacitor like that. Let's just remove the 100 ohm here that's protecting the resistor, and let's put in a bigger resistor. This is my 2,200 ohm resistor that we've used several times. My red, red, red's going in. The one I had before was the black 100 ohm resistor, brown, black, brown, that is what I meant to say. So let's charge up the capacitor again. That doesn't depend at all on the resistor going into the LED. But let's just charge it up here. And then what I'll do is I'll take this line here and I'll connect it again, same spot. See the LED's on. LED's on, turn on the light so you can see it a bit better. LED's on. 
but it's gradually getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer as it goes. And then it's eventually out. Let's run that one, one more time with the lights out like this. Charge up the capacitor. Here we go. Got the battery connected. And let's connect this wire in there. And the LED coming on. I see it's slowly getting dimmer. So the same sort of principle applied there by putting in the larger resistor in there, going from 100 ohms to 2,200 ohms. I still use the charge coming out of the capacitor, but I used it more slowly because, again, that's what resistors do, is they slow the flow of charge down. And so we, saw, again, saw the LED come on as bright as it's going to, given the, given the limiting resistor in there, but it eventually died away as well because it started to use all the charge on the capacitor. So there you go, a little bit of demonstration there that capacitors indeed store electrical energy.